What's poppin' everybody? Cerebral Frank 4. So, in around two weeks, Team Up, or Tack Bolt as it is in Japanese, is gonna come out. And that's usually where I make these TCG meta videos, where I talk about, I evaluate the meta, and what the next set is gonna do, uh, how things are gonna be when the new set gets released, uh, which is gonna be, in around two weeks, like I've said, uh, Team Up. And, my god, the meta, how how it has transformed in a shitty way. I, I would define it as the rise of the troll, the troll duelist, the troll hero, the rise of troll decks, where you have all these troll control ass decks and that try to deck you out, try to run you out of resources, just trying to do all this dumb shit. You know the, the decks that I'm talking about, the ones that just run, you know, Hoopa, the one that blocks GXs, NEXs, and Reggie Gigas. And then, you know, uh, millions of Lucimins and all the supporters that, you know, uh, what's that shit called? Plumeria, you know, discard your energies, try and deck you out, have that fucking, what's it called, giraffe rig to remove resources from your discard pile. You know, those troll decks. And then if you don't encounter those, then you encounter Zorok GX <laughs> decks with Ranguru. And not even the ones that have like that Ranguru as like a, a backup strategy, but you know that f focus entirely on trying to deck you out, you know, run you out of resources, just troll you basically. And don't fucking tell me those decks are legitimate strategies and they're not troll decks because you know that in an actual tournament where there's time limits, you don't, you're not gonna sit around for two hours trying to do shit like that. It's just impossible. So it's just shit to fucking annoy you on. TCG online, and I'm fucking sick of them. Uh, it, they were all, always a pain in expanded, and they're even more of a pain. They're even a pain in standard now too. Like they don't even need all the extra cards expanded has. So that's basically my first impression when it comes to my mind about the meta right now. Lots of control, and not the good type of control, the shitty control. Like uh, these Zorog GX decks that try to do this strategy. I've come across some of them that. They don't even like, they might even have the opportunity to attack, uh, but they don't even do that. They just, they don't even focus on Zorok GX. It's just used to draw you cards to fuel the troll strategy. And it's kind of a shame because Lost Thunder, uh, for better or for worse, it brought us a lot of amazing cards, a lot of strategies. There's just so many different decks that can be sort of legitimate, that can be actually real contenders. Gramble, you know, that, that deck, you know, maybe can do some shit. It's very linear, very simple ass strategy, but you know it was something. You know, a lot of nine tails in general, the fairy one got released. They just given life to so many decks and strategies. All the Pokemon you cannot combine and just make them more consistent. Thanks to the presence of the a lot of nine tails duo, you got the Vulpix that gets you the cards from Guardians Rising, and then you can evolve into the nine tails and get you items too. So it's just a great combination, a consistency duo. And fucking Meganium, wow, I wasn't really that impressed with Meganium, and honestly, to be honest, it is sort of a, a Pokemon that I guess has found its home in troll decks as well, uh, the decks that try to deck you out with Rhyperior and Charizard GX, I've run across those, or you got the ones with Greninja, or Slacken, you know, that, that combo, I guess that's not, not, that's not so bad, but it has definitely given us a new sort of a skeleton, an idea of a consistency skeleton to consider. Like, it's run completely different than most decks. You run a, a bunch of stage two Pokemon, like you gotta run your Swampert, you gotta run your Meganium, and then you run, I guess, a few other Pokemon, like depending on the deck, uh, whether it's Slacken, whether it's Greninja, Charizard, whatever. But you just run those and then you once you get Swampert out, then you can just straight draw. If you get a bunch of Swamperts out, you can draw six cards every turn. Then you use other straight draw cards like Looker and stuff, and you've got that sort of engine. So we had that shit. But for the most part, most of the, you know, the actual meta decks, I guess, that are topping and doing shit, you know, your Buzzwell, Lycanroc, your Fighting decks, your Malamar decks. I guess Malamar... Uh, spread decks made a return as well with Giratina from Lost Thunder. It evolved into a new spread deck, you know, Tapu Koko, Malamar, Giratina. 
or you can just run, you know, Giratina Malamar decks and run Necrozma GX as well, all sorts of variants, Malamar variants, but your fighting decks, your Malamar variants, your Zoroarks, they were still ever-present, of course, uh, always a bunch of new decks, thanks to Lost Thunder, but, you know, the top decks, the relevant decks, still sort of remained the most relevant decks. What else am I missing? Uh, Zero Aura GX, uh, I guess I, well, I was wrong in my prediction, but I really think that if people tried that more, people tried that deck out, like if I just had the cards, I know the, such a, not, the, not to say the perfect list, but I have such a great idea for that deck that it's basically like the Dark Cry deck from 2011 2.0. It was going to be great, but alas, I still don't have the cards to test that out. I think it did win like a regional or it has topped and won like local tournaments, you know, the smaller league championships and stuff. It's a good deck. It's definitely a sought after card. I mean, if anything, Zero Aura GX is a good addition in Rayquaza GX decks giving you that free retreat too. And Rayquaza GX, also a good deck of course still. Uh, more relevant and expanded. I think it's it's definitely more relevant and expanded right now as opposed to standard. But anyway, so enough about the meta. Uh, I think I covered that uh, nicely. Now let's talk about Team Up, our next set, the Kanto themed regional set that's going to be coming 1st of February, basically in around two weeks, like I've said for the millionth time. This set is going to bring us back to the bad, or I guess it, it's still to be determined if it's going to be like that, but it's going to bring us in an era similar to how it was where the original, well not the original, but the black and white basic EXs came out. These giant dinosaur Pokemon, basic Pokemon with the highest HP that give two prizes. And that's basically what these tag team GXs are. They give three prizes, and they have, like, <laughs> over 200 HP, like 270 HP, 250 HP, you know, shit like that. Waylord has been kind of released on its own, thanks to that collection, in that collection box. And it has hardly done anything. I've only run, uh, run up against one deck that was running it, and uh, it expanded, and it scooped halfway trying to run shit like Reuniclus or Renunculus, as I like to call it. Uh, that didn't work out for him. But they're going to make one hell of an impact. There's a lot of strong ones. I mean, if Wailer GX hasn't done shit yet, it might eventually. That 300 HP is just begging to be put in troll decks. You can just basically fucking do the troll, the, the like the Wailer DX troll deck. You know, maybe that's going to come back. Uh, and expand it if it hasn't already happened. But when it comes to good conventional, you know, tag team GX decks, uh, Gengar is really neat. You can basically build the Lost Scar deck, uh, well, not Lost Scar, the Valgar deck again and expand it. Put Valplume again to use. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but that's a thing. We might see some good, finally, some good, just regular stage 2 decks without any GXs being good again, like Nido Queen. It fits, if, if if she has the effect how it is on Cerebi, where she can get like, do like over 250 damage when you have a full bench of Pokemon, they don't even have to be evolved, then she's definitely making an impact. And other Pokemon like Charizard and Blastoise, they can definitely do shit. Uh, Charizard is really good, Blastoise can be pretty handy too with its ability to accelerated water energies and the big question really is are these tag team gx pokemon going to bring us back into the black and white days where evolved pokemon aren't good and big basic pokemon are the way to go because snorlax gx you know that guy with just one energy in a dc it takes care of well not only evolved you know stage one stage two gx pokemon with ease it's going to be able to take care of any stage pokemon in general as long as it's evolved that's 240 damage, and that's pretty, you know, intense. Of course, against other regular basic Pokemon GX and stuff, it's only going to do 120, and that's not super special. But, like, I do wonder, this set brings a lot of those elements back. These giant-ass Pokemon, they're just begging to be exploited with Max Potions, Ace Arolas, you know, these sorts of cards. Uh, the big, you know, trainer card this set brings us that I think it's going to 
increase consistency in basically any deck is Erigas Hospitality. This card is just great, exactly what we're missing. We're missing more, you know, power supporters like we have Cynthia, but you know, we don't have like we haven't had a supporter like Chorus in a while. And it was okay when we still had like Juniper and and then we got Cynthia too. But you know, losing those cards and just having been left with, you know, Cynthia just isn't enough. You know, Tate and Liza. You know, it has that flexibility with the switching, but it just doesn't net you enough cards. Lily isn't always as effective uh, when you basically have no cards in hand. And just Erigas Hospitality is exactly what we need. It's going to be perfect in just about any deck, really. Pokemon Communication is coming back, too. There's a lot of uh, uh, good cards in general. And I really do wonder, I don't want to make a prediction like I did last time with uh, Zero Aura GX, and that turned out, you know, very wrong. When I'm looking at the set, immediately, you know, I eye up Nidoqueen as good. I eye up Gengar and Mimikyu GX. Definitely Snorlax as a significant Pokemon. And a lot of other small Pokemon like Articuno. What's that other one that has a good supporting ability? Uh, I forgot. I think it's Jinx, maybe? I don't remember. But there's just a wide variety of Pokemon. Uh, for me, I like stuff like Moltres. But, you know, that's not really a meta a meta Pokemon. But yeah, just if I had to sum things up, I would say the, ta the Tag Team GXs uh, basically are the name of the game here. Uh, they're the most impactful thing coming out from our next set. And maybe m more people are going to focus more on building decks around them. And, you know, focusing on their large HP, trying to take advantage of that. How... Well, how we do today, trying to take advantage of the large HP of stage GX Pokemon with Ace Rolls and shit, just more, even more effectively, since they have even higher HP. Basically, kind of like the shit that started when the basic GXs came out in black and white, and, you know, things like Dark Cry and Mewtwo uh, could have been healed with Max Potion and shit. Same, basically, rinse and repeat in a way. The TCG kind of repeats itself in this regard. But I think I'm going to wrap this video up because I'm just rambling. I can't really distinguish a very specific theme or a very specific deck that can come out of this set. That just It's going to be like the deck to beat, like how Forbidden Light brought us, you know, Malamar. Ultra Prism brought us, you know, Metal. And Celestial Storm brought us uh, Rayquaza, basically. You know, this set just brings out a lot of generally good cards and the big tag team GX Pokemon. So maybe Snorlax GX is going to be uh, the most significant one since it's just so easy to use. Get one shots on Evolve Pokemon so easily. It really is going to beg the question if people are going to drop, stop using Pokemon like Zorok GX because it's easy prey against Eevee and Snorlax GX. But alas, we'll have to wait and see as always. Uh, I'm not going to make any bold predictions like last time so that I don't get completely fucking wrong. But team up. Uh, Tack Bolt, however you want to call it. Definitely another significant asset that the Pokemon Company keeps releasing. Trying to one-up every previous set, basically, in a way. And you guys should definitely be on the lookout for the Tag Team GX Pokemon. And Pokemon like Nidoqueen, and Charizard, and Blastoise. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. So that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys subscribe. Leave a like. Share this with your friends. Uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, say Rolf and I 4, and I'll see you guys on the next video. What's up?